Two, three, four. All right, who's ready for Proverbs? We'll start with a prayer of the week from the Around the Word devotion. Absolve, we implore you, implore you, O Lord, your people from their offenses. That from the bonds of our sins, which by reason of our frailty we have brought upon us, we may be delivered by your bountiful goodness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Proverbs chapter 5. We have the warning of the adulterous woman. And i got to show you this. Because remember how we're talking about a wisdom being the, uh, uh, the, the bride that we embrace and that we hold on to? Well, this is our whole... You can't read it. It's too small. But this is the whole book of Proverbs. And really, we're going to we're working towards eight. Here's chapter five. But this uh, the adulterous woman as the anti wisdom is going to come up now. She was already introduced over here. That's chapter two, verses um, 16 to 22. And now she's going to come up in the entirety of chapter five. All the way. Every verse in chapter five is going to be about this. Uh, adulterous, anti-woman wisdom. But not just there. She's going to come up in chapter 6, right around here. This is like verses 24 to 29 in in chapter 6. And then chapter 7, starting with verse 6, all the way to the end is going to be this picture of the adulterous woman. Now, now look at that. Can, can you see in, in this first part of Proverbs, it's probably, what, a third of the text is warning against the adulterous woman. Now, it's not only a warning uh, against adultery, it's more than that, but it is not less than that. Solomon is saying one of the biggest ways that we show our foolishness is by following after the adulterer. So, he begins, chapter 5, verse 1, My son, be attentive to my wisdom, incline your ear to my understanding, that you may keep discretion and your lips may guard knowledge. Remember how uh, it's supposed to be that out of our lips are coming. That's that's lips. Can you look at see those lips? Anyway, out of our lips are, is supposed to be coming wisdom. <laughs> but but Solomon's going to say something different. There's there's another thing that can happen with the lips. Look, for the lips of a forbidden woman drip honey. And her speech is smoother than oil. But in the end, she is as bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Now, do you get the picture? Here's the forbidden woman, which is basically any woman who is not your wife. And she is there. And in, uh, unlike wisdom, who, who tempts us on the path of life, this uh, the seductress tempts us to the path of, of death. In fact, the, the, the path that leads back from her is going to end in destruction, in Sheol, in hell. Uh, her bed, the, the, the picture is, here's her bed. I don't know why we're always drawing pictures of beds in this Bible study, but anyway, here, here's the woman's bed, and it's like a trap door that leads down to hell. Anyway, her lips drip honey, drip. Her speech is smoother than oil. Notice how I'm making this very attractive. But in the end, she's as bitter as wormwood and sharp as any two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps follow the path to Sheol. That is the place of the dead. Sometimes hell, sometimes the grave. She does not ponder the path of life. Remember? Death. Life. Her ways wander, and she does not know it. So that the the, the picture of the adulterous woman is is a... Uh, uh, like all of our anti-commandments. Remember, the Ten Commandments are here, and the, the love for God and love for the neighbor and family and life and uh, and marriage and property and possessions and a good name and contentment and God and His name and 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 worship. All the, the, we have the Ten Commandments here, and the devil is always fighting against these. And here, the adulterous woman is sent by the devil to attack this, the sixth commandment, and God's gift of marriage. Now, th this is life over here, and this is death over here. But the point is that adultery doesn't look like death. It looks like honey and oil. It doesn't look like wormwood and, and sword. It looks like beauty. 
Now, my son, verse 7, listen to me. Oh, my son, listen to me. And do not turn her mouth. Keep your way far from her. And do not go near the door of her house, lest you give your honor to others and your years to the merciless. Now, here's what Solomon's going to say. With the sixth commandment and, the, and, the, and any sin against the Lord's gift of chastity, is uh, the danger is loss of everything. Loss of honor, loss of life, loss of strength, loss of effort. And then and, and he takes you all the way to the end of your life. And, and, and he says, now, if you are the adulterer, you're going to look back at the end of your life and you're going to have this, you're going to have nothing but regret. Uh, lest strangers take their fill of your strength, your laborers to the house of a foreigner, and at the end of your life you groan when your flesh and body are consumed, and you say, how I hated discipline, my heart despised reproof, I did not listen to the voice of my teachers or incline my ear to my instructors, I'm at the brink of utter ruin in the assembly of the congregation. So that the, the, the life of breaking marriage vows, the life of not chastity, the life of sexual immorality, it ends with nothing but regret. Now, and we don't want to be too fancy about this, but there's something that, that the fifth commandment, the, the sixth commandment, the seventh commandment, the eighth commandment, the fourth commandment, I've got them numbered all wrong. Anyway, these are all bound up to one another. It's very, very difficult to be committing adultery and to still worship God. It's very, very difficult for adultery not to result in the, in the loss of property, of a good name, even life, family, and all these sorts of things. Now, now it seems like if you were to picture a city, you know, protected by a wall, uh, and uh, you know, a, a kind of a strong uh, a wall or castle or something like this, and, um, and and you were looking, and the devil wants to attack this wall, it looks like that the weakest part, where the wall is often very crumbly, is at the sixth commandment. <laughs> so the temptation to commit adultery is the place where the devil can uh, get over the wall and attack and destroy everything else in between. And, and that's what this is saying. Okay. Now, there's more to that because the scripture always uh, equates um, a sexual morality and adultery and idolatry to one another. So, so this is a whole picture of the temptation away from wisdom. But it's not less than that. It's a warning. Now, here's St. Uh, oh, Paul. St. Solomon is going to warn us uh, or is going to give us the antidote, antidote for this uh, chasing after the adulterous woman. Uh, verses 15 to 23 at the end. Drink water from your own cistern, flowing water from your own well. Should your springs be scattered abroad, streams of water in the street, let them be for yourself alone and not for your strangers with you. In other words, uh, your own cistern, your own well, this is talking about the delight that husband and wife have in one another. And it's speaking uh, here metaphorically what it's going to say plainly in just a few minutes. Let your fountain be blessed and rejoice in the white of your youth. Now, I would like to point out the word rejoice. Remember how we... We've talked a lot in this study so far about delight, and the question is, what is your delight in? Are you delighting in the Lord's Word? Are you delighting in wisdom? Are you delighting in the things of God? Or are you delighting in breaking the commandments, delighting in sin, delighting in uh, error, delighting in uh, foolishness, and this sort of thing? Now, there, there's probably uh, a bunch of things that the Lord tells us to delight in. The chief thing that we're always taught to delight in in the Scripture is the Lord's Word. But the next thing here is to rejoice in your wife, in your spouse, if you are a wife, to delight in your husband. It's not a matter of uh, enduring the, the wife of your youth. It, th this is talking about more than that. This is talking about joy. In fact, love uh, you know, takes two different forms. Uh, we were at Doxology this week talking about this. Love takes two different forms depending on if the beloved is present or absent. And if the beloved is absent, then our love takes the form of longing. And sometimes even, you know, if they've died, it takes the form of mourning. That's love. But when the lo beloved is present, then love takes the form of joy. Now look at how Solomon will describe the wife of your youth. I, I wonder if this is a, the Bible telling us that marriage can be at an early age as well. But anyway, a lovely deer, a graceful doe. Let her breasts fill you at all times with delight. See it? There it is. Be intoxicated always in her love. Now, it's, it's incredible, the emotive talk that Solomon is speaking. And, and we see that the opposite of this, really, is not hatred. 
the opposite of intoxication with your wife's uh, love. The opposite is boredom. I don't know how often I see couples and talk to couples who, whose marriage is being attacked by the devil because they are bored with one another. The, the husband, for some reason, is bored with his wife. He doesn't have delight. He's, he's lost his curiosity. And the, and the wife finds someone who's more excited than her than, than him. And boredom is the way that the devil comes in and, and attacks and tempts towards adultery. So Solomon is saying, do, do not let that happen. Do, continue to be curious and to rejoice in your wife. Why should you be intoxicated, my son, with a forbidden woman? You have a wife at home. And embrace the bosom of an adulteress. For a man's ways are before the eyes of the Lord, and he ponders all his paths. Now, this is an important point. The eyes of the Lord are everywhere. He sees everything. The Lord looks from heaven and beholds. So there is, for the Christian, no such thing as a private act. There's nothing done in secret. The Lord uh, knows all. He sees all. And, and if you think that you've now snuck away with the adulteress to, uh, to, to have your fun, he says, look, the, you, you are not uh, apart from the Lord's eyes. The iniquities of the wicked ensnare him, and he is held fast in the cords of his sin. The, oh, oh, what a tangled web we weave. You know, this is the fowler's net. This is the, the spider web. And, and the, the deception that goes along with adultery is weaving this web and we're caught in our own web he dies for lack of discipline because of his great folly he is led astray now this whole thing is a warning against uh the the fifth command or the breaking of the sixth commandment of adultery and it stands as a strong warning it is near impossible to be an adulterer and to have wisdom but it is not impossible to break the sixth commandment and lack repentance. And so if this is a particularly convicting uh, section of scripture for you, know that the Lord has died, even for the sin of adultery. But in that death and the forgiveness of sins, he's saying, look, wisdom, the way that goes to life, is the way of joy in your spouse, in your, in your wife and in your husband, uh, delighting in them. And we fight against the devil, not only with repentance, but also with our joy in our spouse. All right, there you have it. Discussions of adultery, Proverbs chapter 5. Where's these things? Peter, you want to put this stuff on here? World of Everlasting, that link will lead you somewhere. Subscribe. That's here. Where's all my other stuff? Oh, yeah, Table Talk. Oh, you don't care about Table Talk. Uh, uh, around the Word Devotions. I think we can put a link up to a video, How to Use the Around the Word Devotions. And then you can give us a thumbs up and all that other stuff. All right. See you next week.